we've got Rowena coming in from the New School of Fundraising, who's going to be talking about maximizing impact with limited resources, the new reality of demonstrating value. So hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And yes, I am the founder and lead instructor of the New School of Fundraising, which is a virtual fundraising school, which helps anyone in Canada to raise money. I was the marketing person's worst nightmare when she said, what is your audience? And I said, anybody who wants to raise money, that's who we help. So thank you for help, for letting me be here. This is really exciting for me. So the new reality of fundraising, where do we say post pandemic now? We are, I don't want to jinx us, but heading into potentially recessions, some tough times. And what we hear across the board is we have to do more with less. There's more need than ever before. Where do we go from that? My school is about, let's turn everything on its head. Let's rethink it. Let's not just go back to what we were doing before. Let's think about this. And a big one is how we demonstrate impact. So I'd love to hear, what does impact, oh, look, gonna, what does impact mean to you? Jump into the chat. One word. When I say impact, what does that mean to you? What is impactful to you? Positive change, meaningful change, improving people's lives, outcomes. Oh, you guys, really good. It has an effect. Change in behavior. Oh, and Eli didn't press my five minute timer at, before I went. I was too excited to get started. All people good. I'm on it. People participate. Thanks, you guys. Great. I think it's a really interesting thing. We think of donors and we often think of them as other people, but we are donors too. And we experience impact. And when we read something, we feel impact from it, or we have great examples of something that has shown us impact. And therefore value. Some people find value in the big bag of swag that comes in a direct mail piece. I personally don't. I do take the little things and use them sometimes, but I usually tell that organization to stop emailing me or mailing me. But if that didn't work, it wouldn't happen. So we have to think about how can we demonstrate impact at organizations? And that often is about storytelling. So if we look at stories, what do we use these stories for? Let's look acquisition cultivation, solicitation, stewardship, et cetera. All of our lovely words that we use across the donor cycle and every, every aspect of that, we use storytelling. What sometimes happens though, is we think of these things all separately. We don't think of them as one, one story that could go across the board. Then where do we use stories? Well, we use those in our collateral, in our grant applications, in person. I want you to think, how knowledgeable are your board members, your volunteers, your ambassadors to be able to share your stories in person? How much are they armed with your stories? What do they have in their toolkit? I can probably guarantee you that it's less than you think that they have. So always something to think about. Our social media, our direct mail, our website, all of these ways. A really fun activity to do with your team is to sit at your next team meeting and talk about if I was to ask you, why your organization? Why would I give to your organization? And what makes your organization unique? This starts to form your story, which is also important. And what's really neat, involve everyone in this conversation because the answers to this are really interesting to, to look through. And you usually get the biggest surprise or unexpected answer from somebody who's not involved with fundraising. It doesn't have anything to do with fundraising at this point. And then to back up what Amelia said, when we are sharing, oh, sorry, there's a spelling mistake. When we are sharing stories, we have to consider videos and photos as well. And that pages, look at this statistic, pages with visuals drive 94% more views on average or visuals are processed faster than words. And this is where I'm gonna double down. I think often we think, the whole topic of the talk was about how do we do less with, how do we do more with less? And we have to think about who is collecting these stories for us. Are we involving volunteers? How about past participants from our organization? Are we asking youth to collect the stories? What a great opportunity for youth. Are they our clients that are collecting the stories, if that's appropriate, or our board members? I know at nonprofits, we tend to keep this in-house and it's a bit of a protection thing. I don't know, we have some trust issues. We need to all go through a bit of a trust system together. But I want to tell you, look at these happy people. This is why they're happy. How can you use stories and how can you show impact and also address other things that you need to happen? So 
say you were an organization that was working on youth leadership, youth and girls and women's leadership, and you needed to recognize a sponsor. Let's not put up on social media the check presentation anymore. Let's not put up the thank you to ABC company for sponsoring this. Nobody likes us. Nobody cares about those and they don't get good traffic. What if we ask that organization to, to supply a female leader at the organization and we had one of our youth go and volunteer and interview her? What if we did this? What if we had that youth and provided this beautiful mentorship opportunity and growth opportunity for our youth? We had this great interview, which drove our own objectives as well. And who knows what could happen? I can almost guarantee that relationship would keep going between the two of them, which would be great. And we actually had people read it. So in all of our, in a lot of our sessions, we say to people, let's think about what we need and let's think about how we're showing impact and let's think about what's not needed anymore. And we have organizations say, but we have to do that. The sponsors need that. The companies require that. Do they, or do we just keep putting it on agreements? Because I guarantee you that. Okay, that's it. That was it. 